Hello, welcome to this uh, Substance Alchemist or uh, Adobe Sampler tutorial. Um, and what we're going to do here is take an already tiled texture. So we've got like the um, the base color, the albedo uh, map. Uh, and I want to get some um, what do we have, height and roughness information out of it. So uh, I have my brick here and I have to say this is possibly one of the more perfect bricks for this kind of process uh, that I've found. So I'm just going to drag and drop it over onto this little uh, drag and drop uh, area here. And when I do that, it's going to come up with uh, this wizard interface. And for this one, I'm just going to pick image to material and then click OK. And what that's going to do now is start to process and it's going to have a think and it's going to take a moment or two um, but it's using the joyous power of ai to figure out and actually it wasn't too long at all there we go so this is what it's come up with and let's have a look around it looks pretty good uh, but i want to show you a few options to tweak it so first of all we need to select the image to AI layer here and then down here we have some uh, geometry detail options and if I zoom into this so we can see uh, what we're doing we've got detail levels so we've got micro details uh, we've got the mini medium details and then we've got large details and I can dial all of those out and it will completely blank my map uh, so now obviously we haven't got any kind of uh, surface generation at all uh, so micro details are very small pieces so very small variations so it's picking up the surface detail if you like the very kind of fine detail of our uh, of our texture uh, and if I pick up the medium details it will bring in some of the uh, more broad variations and if I pick up large details it will pick up the very big differences so you can dial those up and down as uh, as required really uh, I'm going to take my medium down a teeny bit and my large down a teeny bit as well just to get kind of a, a middle ground but I do want all that lovely surface detail so I'm going to leave that at max okay so underneath that we have a geometry equalizer uh, we can set the height to invert if we wanted to uh, we've got ambient occlusion strength so uh, I've got my split screen in two here uh, that's up here so if I've just got the little box I get the 3d and if I put the 2d view up I get that and on the 2d view I can view the channels so down here we can see each of our channels as they're generated so the ambient occlusion strength if I take that right down uh, it takes all of the kind of occluded light out of the situation and if I turn it right up we get it back in again so again you can uh, put it you know pretty much as you want it similarly under that we've got a de-lighting option which is excellent um, it takes uh, what it perceives as the uh, lit information out so there doesn't actually appear to be a lot in this one anyway um, but as I turn that up and down I can take that out you see at the bottom of this brick there's a little shadow and here we've got a little shadow as well and it's just detecting those and if I turn this right up it takes them out and everything's good so that's terrific uh, the last little section is uh, roughness so let's uh, switch to the roughness channel so roughness here I've got white more or less and uh, a darker grey that's giving more shine to the brick than it is to the uh, the mortar uh, but I don't want either to be particularly shiny at all so in this case I'm going to change my base value so if I turn it up to 1 it will be almost completely rough and if I turn it down a little bit I do want a little bit of difference but not too much uh, we'll get to a happy medium 
Uh, there's also variations. So uh, on its own, uh, without variation, it looks like that. And if I turn the variations up, I get some slight differences across. I'm not liking those variations very much. They're blowing out the mortar too much for me. Um, and I can take softness out for the variations. So again, you see they're very sharp. If I turn the variations right up, and if I then increase the softness, they get a bit more uh, blurred. So in this case, I don't think I'm going to have much in the way of variation or softness. Uh, and then we've got an albedo detail importance. You know, how much information is it taking to get the uh, the roughness out of this from the uh, the albedo channel? So if I turn that down, I get very little. And if I turn it up, it's much more pronounced. So I'm going to leave that turned up. And of course, we can invert the roughness to get it really shiny. It's like a really wet day or a very varnished brick. So <coughs> uh, that's that. Um, once you've got it set as you want it, uh, we can use this little share button here. And I can either export as, um, where are we? It's here somewhere. I can export as images and I can select the images that I want to export out. Uh, or somewhere there is a publish button. Where's the publish button gone? Let's click that off again. It's not that one. I was sure it was under share. Ah, there's got a center substance 3D painter up there and a center substance stager there. Uh, neither of which are enabled. Well, I've got substance painter installed. Or perhaps I need the latest version. Anyway, you can publish to Substance Painter or um, Substance Stage or 3D Stager, uh, but we're just going to export these maps for now uh, because obviously my machine is having a moment. Uh, so base color normal roughness. Uh, I can add any of the other channels in here. Uh, so let's have height, and let's have what else should we have? Uh, la, 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 la. I'm having trouble seeing the list now. Uh, we can have the ambient occlusion out and then we'll call this uh, process brick uh, we set our formats and a uh, area to export to <coughs> I'm going to do a bit of a tutorial with this in a few minutes so I'm going to put it into uh, my training area there we go, select that folder and I can select uh, a resolution, I'm going to leave it at 4k because I want lots and lots of lovely density and then I'm going to export uh, down at the bottom somewhere depending upon how quick it is or rather here um, it's telling you uh, how quick it's doing it so it's whether it's processed or not and when it's processed you can click on that little folder there and it will show you your maps so there we go, uh, let's make those bigger, there we go. So we've got all our maps now and we can use those wherever we want. Um, you know, whether it be in like a 3D program like Blender, whether you're going to paint with it in substance uh, or whatever you want to do. Uh, so I hope you found that useful and I'll talk to you soon.